वेलकम बैक अगेन इन द स्मॉल डिस्कशन ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ रेशनल एंटीबायोटिक प्रस्क्रिप्शन दिस इज अ वेरी कॉमन प्रैक्टिस और वी हैव अ वेरी कॉमन क्लिनिकल सीनेरियोज वेयर वी आर बाउंड टू प्रेस्क्राइब एंटीबायोटिक एज पर द क्लिन कंडीशन ऑफ द पेशेंट बट इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो वेन टू प्रेस्क्राइब एंड वेन नॉट टू प्रेस्क्राइब द रेशनल यूज ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड so whenever we plan for a patient for antibiotic therapy there are certain golden principles that must be followed that must be accepted when we are writing a antibiotic prescription because we all know as the time is passing by the antibiotic resistance cases are increasing day by day and it is a become a very difficult clinical scenario sometimes difficult clinical situation to treat in one and we all know that the multi drug resistant bugs are increasing like pseudomonas klebsiella we find that they are a resistant of the common antibiotic so we should be very rational while antibiotic therapy so today we will discuss this golden principle the, the 10 basic principles for antibiotic prescription so let's start i'm dr rikum sharma currently working as an assistant professor in the department of respiratory medicine at government medical college haldwani uttarakhand so let's start so what is the objective of discussion today we have today we will learn to provide a simple best and empiric specific treatment for a common infections and we learn to promote the safe effective economic and rational use of antibiotic this is very important term rational use and we should be able to clinically sound enough and we should be judicious that whether my patient needs antibiotic treatment or not all right and this is very important for not us to know that when to use when not to use. this is very important actually we should be very specific and we should be clinically sound enough to guide that does my patient need antibiotic treatment so this question should be in our mind whenever we write any prescription and we the discussion the main purpose is also to minimize the emergence of bacterial resistance in our community that is save the antibiotics for future microbial war rampant and irrational antibiotic treatment can lead to the increased drug resistant cases increased drug resistant microbial flora and that becomes very difficult to treat so there are many case report all over the world all over the india itself in the different scenario different clinical uh, settings and hospitals that they have found that there is a growing number of increasing bacterial strains that are resistant to your common used antibiotic so what will happen ultimately there will be one clinical condition there will be one state where we will not be able to treat our patient because the infection will be very difficult to treat with our common available antibiotics because of the emergence of a drug resistant microorganism so we should be very very specific and we should always follow these 10 basic principles whenever we write antibiotic prescription for our patient all right so what is the principle number 1 that is empiric antimicrobial treatment should be limited to conditions where immediate or early initiation of antimicrobials have shown to be beneficial there are certain clinical condition we encounter in our day to day practice that early start of antibiotic treatment is definitely going to change the clinical outcome of that patient so in these situations antibiotic prescription is yes we can prescribe So what are these conditions? One is your severe sepsis and sepsis-induced tissue hyperperfusion or organ dysfunction and septic shock. So this is a clear indication that here we have to give broad-spectrum antibiotic to our patients. All right. Second is your acute acute bacterial meningitis. This is the another condition where we have to use antibiotic as per the clinical condition as per the most possible organism for our patient. Community acquired pneumonia. We all know that. it is a most commonly it is caused by your bacteria so there is a bacterial pathogen involved so in this situation we should use antibiotic we can go antibiotic treatment beforehand vap that is ventilator associated pneumonia if the patient develops vap who is hospitalized in the hospital yes vap needs antibiotic treatment and that antibiotic should be as per the microbial profile of that institute or that hospital what is microbial profile each and every hospital settings each and every institute they do a survey that what are the most common organism most common bugs that are growing in our hospital settings so we should all have your own microbial flora that is most prevalent in our hospital or clinic setting according to that we target antibiotic therapy to those pathogens 
which are likely to cause ventilator associated pneumonia in our hospitalized patient all right so that is one indication for antibiotic treatment necrotizing fasciitis yes it is an indication for antibiotic treatment because it can rapidly uh, uh, go into a shock patient can deteriorate very fast so in that situation we should always use antibiotic treatment febrile neutropenia that is another indication where we can use empirical antimicrobial treatment so these are the principle number 1 okay and the principle number 2 this is very important to know that fever leukocytosis elevated c reactive protein levels by themselves should not be considered indication for starting empiric antimicrobial why because as this have been shown to have a very poor specificity to diagnose bacterial sepsis and in these situations always consider multiple data point history physical exam investigation reports together to make an accurate diagnosis because we know that fever have many non infectious cause leukocytosis can be there in case of non infective cause crp is a very non specific marker it's a marker of inflammation and it can be there in inflammatory disease also and infective disease also so fever leukocytosis elevated crp are absolute no indication for antimicrobial treatment until and unless there is a clinical evident focus for any infection and at the clinical presentation of the patient so always we have to look for the history in that situation physical examination and investigation report to support to use antibiotic if at all we are using in this situations okay so that is very important for no so i should take one example here for example we all know in acute myocardial infarction or acute ischemic event there may be some fever there may be feverish leukocytosis may be there that is a cause of non infectious cause of leukocytosis so in that situation these patient do not require antibiotic treatment they will simply need cardiology treatment and as per protocol okay so in this situation we should not treat them with the antibiotic rather we should focus on treating their primary pathology okay third point is incomplete and inaccurate diagnosis is the most important reason for inappropriate use of antimicrobial this is a very important point and i am stressing this point why because incomplete inaccurate diagnosis we have to diagnose the patient before prescription of an antibiotic so this is most common because sometime the time is very short or sometime the history is not very proper in this situation clinical exam findings lab investigations are not appropriate so in that situation in a incomplete and inaccurate workup inaccurate diagnosis is a most important because sometime we are not sure that what the diagnosis is lab reports are also not very convincing in that situation we use antibiotic and this is the most common cause of inappropriate use of antimicrobial that is incomplete and inaccurate diagnosis so it should be very uh, taken seriously that every patient should be diagnosed clearly that whether this patient have infective focus or not and does this patient is a candidate for antimicrobial treatment so that is very important for to understand fourth point is always obtain cultures that we should do a two set of blood culture and other appropriate culture samples as clinically indicated for example normally like sterile body fluids deep pus before starting empiric antimicrobial treatment so we should send cultures before the start of antimicrobial treatment but sometime patient is really very sick clinically he is very going to do very fast and if we, we do not have time to take a culture from the site from blood culture from the pus so in that situation we can administer first dose of antibiotic and we can take cultures as soon as possible preferably within 30 minutes to 1 hour so that is a dire situation that is a very serious condition in that situation okay so that is very important so better always send blood cultures before the dose of antibiotic that we know and this is very important that avoid the practice of obtaining your pan cultures unless clinically indicated what does pan culture means sending cultures for blood culture urine culture you know uh, pus culture so sending all the culture that is not not appropriate we should basically we should send cultures from the site where we are thinking that there might be a focus of infection if you think that blood blood is in uh, uh, infective focus so we should send the blood culture if they we see that patient is catheterized for long time and we if you are suspecting that the patient is having uti he may have a urosepsis so in that situation we should send a urine for culture all right so that is a we should be very judicious what culture we should send for point number 5 that is principle 5 is avoid sending cultures from superficial wound decubitus ulcers and chronic wound draining sinuses surface swab culture are either inadequate and provide misleading information regarding diagnosis as they cannot differentiate infection from colonization or contamination 
So this is very important point. We should not say we should avoid sending culture from superficial wound. If the patient is having any superficial wound, any superficial ulcer, and if you are sending culture from that side, that culture report can be very misleading because that culture may be contaminated by your normal flora also sometimes. So it is a very misleading information in that situation. So better we should avoid cultures from these sides. What is the principle of six? When starting antimicrobials, use full therapeutic dose, paying close attention to the dose, frequency and the route of administration and duration of treatment because this is very important. We should use appropriate doses as per the clinical condition. We should not dose, we should not use inferior doses, lower doses, not the higher doses. We should use the full therapeutic dose as per the patient renal and liver profile. All right. And the frequency root of animation that every should be mentioned. Every should everything should be mentioned very clearly in our file, case file that what is the dose of antibiotic, what is the frequency, whether it is 12 hourly, whether it is 24 hourly, whether it is IV, intravenous, it is whether it's intramuscular or it is a continuous infusion. So we should always make it very clear the plan of administration, doses, schedule when we are planning to give our patient an antibiotic treatment. All right. And Principle number seven is review all antimicrobial prescription 48 to 72 hours. That is antimicrobial timeout with a view to modify or stop the in initial empirical therapy. So when we start antibiotic therapy for our patient, we should review all the antimicrobial prescription after 48 or 72 hours with a view to modify that if I start antibiotic prescription for my patient. So I should check that my patient is getting better or getting worse with the same prescription that I have planned for. So I have started our patient on amoxicillin or ceftriaxone and if the patient is deteriorating after 48 to 72 hours, so what should I do that? I should go back, I should recheck my diagnosis, I should recheck my doses, I should recheck my uh, antibiotic uh, prescription because that may be not appropriate for the disease per se concern. So I should always review the patient 48 to 72 hours. And that is a very important important point here is if the patient is deteriorating very fast, I should screen, I should evaluate my patient early, even 12 hours or 6 hours early even. So earlier evolution is required if the patient deteriorate faster. So principle number 8 is your de-escalate targeted or pathogen specific therapy, the antimicrobial regime once culture and susceptibility reports are available and the patient is showing sign of improvement with the initial empirical broad spectrum antimicrobial. So as soon as we have sent the patient culture of the patient and the culture reports are coming within two or three days, so by the time I have started my patient on empiric antibiotic microbial treatment and my patient is gradually getting better, he is improving. Clinical signs of improvement are there, TLC count is getting down, his symptoms and his uh, getting better. So what do I do? By this time, if I get my culture reports, I should do all of th these things, I should do a we should choose a narrow spectrum antimicrobial as per the culture report. We should reduce our prescription from combination of double drugs to single drug and to less toxic drugs. If, if I have started my treatment with the harder one with the more toxic antibi antibiotics, then I should switch on to less toxic as per the culture report of the patient and better to start from IV to an oral formulation. So we should always think to step down or de-escalate our antibiotic treatment once our patient is getting better and culture reports are available to us. All right. And principle number nine is stop antimicrobials if the cause of initial symptom is found to be non-infectious. This is a very important point. We should all know that if the cause is non-infective, non-infectious, never, never give antibiotic because it's going to do more harm than good. All right. And the last principle is principle number 10, when antibiotics are required to treat an infection, it is important to consider the right choice, the right doses, the right route, right duration and right frequency. These all five are right choices, right doses, right route, right duration, right frequency to ensure adequate target site consideration and therapeutic efficacy. So this golden five are must be remembered whenever we are providing antibiotic prescription for our patient. Drug of choice is there for a particular disease so that we should all follow right doses. Yes, that is very important. Right route, whether it's IV, it's intramuscular or continuous infusion that must be followed. Right duration, how long we are planning to prescribe for and right frequency, whether it is 12 hourly or 8 hourly or to achieve our adequate target concentration at the disease site. So this is very important. We should always follow this rule of 5R. 
whenever we are planning to give antibiotic treatment for our patient. So, this is all about your 10 principles for antibiotic, rational antibiotic prescription. So, hopefully, we should follow these all principles whenever we are planning to give or administer antibiotic treatment for our patient. So, thank you so much for watching and uh, this is taken from your CMC Velour guidelines and you can also have uh, look for EMS Jodhpur, EMS Delhi for their uh, guidelines for the antibiotic treatment in the different disease condition. Alright, so this is all for today and uh, if this video is informative, like the video, share, put your comments in the comment box and if you want any further topics, further videos on a particular topic, just let us know in the comment box and we shall try to make a uniform and simplified video on that particular topic. So thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.